Mr. World Gilgis era presidente dell'Università di Asmara ed è stato governatore della Banca Centrale e poi è uscito criticando il governo. Quali sono le prospettive di Eritrea e di cambiare il governo? Penso che Eritrea è ready to change. The objective situation is right. The subjective factors are also right thing. Change is long overdue and I think today it is it's coming. There is a resistance increasingly being organized inside the country. The opposition outside is uh, getting its act together. It's trying to create a broad coalition to sort of awaken and mobilize the so-called silent majority outside, which has been, uh, which has been sort of withdrawn but uh, opposed to the regime. So we want to transform this passive opposition to the regime into active opposition. And once we are able to build a political bridge between the openly organized opposition in the diaspora and the clandestinely organized opposition at home, then we can crystallize, we can build the critical mass necessary to crystallize change from within. You talk about resistance. There is the resistance inside the country. Is, is active the resistance inside the, inside the country? Yes, it's active, but it's uh, also clandestine. The fact that you have so many detentions, so many jailings taking place from now, uh, every now and then, is a sign of resistance itself. The fact that so many people are also leaving the country in despair is a sign of resistance. So there is a resistance in the country, that's undeniable. But the resistance being clandestine and being a bit disjointed uh, is strengthening, is, uh, at the moment, is uh, gaining momentum. There's no question that there is resistance. Resistance in the army, resistance in the civil Can service. Can we say that is organized resistance or not? Yes, of course. Resistance is organized. Is organized. Yes, organized. And why the people, the youth people, leave the country? Because uh, Eritrea has become unlivable for them. Look, as young people, they have a right to proper education. They have a right to prepare for life. They have a right to, 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 to build families, etc. In Eritrea today, unfortunately, we have this national service. At its inception, it was a good idea because uh, to build a defense capability for the country along the lines of Switzerland where you have a trained uh, population that you can mobilize in time of need. But the legal uh, limit of that national service was uh, two years. Half a year of training Actually, 18 months, I should say, not even two years. Half a year of training and a year of free service to the country, building infrastructure, public works, etc. Now it's become indefinite, which is against the proclamation, which is illegal, which has eroded its very legitimacy. So people once in national service are forced to stay in national service indefinitely, like people who were 18 in 1994, 1995, are now how many, uh, how old, in their late 30s, okay? So how can people be held in that situation for life? This is uh, effectively a kind of modern day servitude and they do not get in a compensation, compensation enough to sustain families, to build families, etc. So these people are leaving Eritrea because of this uh, intense political repression because of this state of modern day servitude and because of course a lack of uh, opportunities to build a life uh, to, to, to uh, worthy uh, of human beings in the 21st century. Thank you very much uh, Mr. Wodigurgis. Uh, I hope that the chair will come soon uh, soon a free and democratic country. Uh, per africa-express.info Massimo Alberizzi. Grazie. 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 Grazie.